The Frozen Orb Sorcerer is so fucking good in Season 4. Stick around to find out all the objective facts. The main skill that we're going to be using is Frozen Orb, obviously, but with the Greater Rune, as that's going to make enemies vulnerable. Your first two points, however, you need to put in a Fire Bolt, because we're going to take advantage of a ton of the burning benefits later on. The rest of your skill bar is pretty straightforward for a Sorcerer, for resource generation, and for defensive cooldowns, but it is just a myriad of cooldowns. It's Shimmering Flaming Shield, Shimmering Teleport, Enhanced Ice Armor, Enhanced Ice Blades is what some people recommend recommend. I personally like to use Frost Nova instead. And then for the ultimate, you can use Deep Freeze or the Fire Snake Inferno. Now, the reason why Inferno would be really good this season is because Frozen Orb blows up wherever you click it instead of a set distance from your character. So you'd essentially just cast Inferno to gather everything up and then blow a bunch of frozen blue balls everywhere and call it a day. Now, the key passive that we're going with is Shatter as it's going to make your AoE build do even more AoE so that you can AoE while you AoE. Then for most of the other passives, you can do whatever you want, but the four that I recommend highly, I wrote on a list over here, it's Devouring Blaze for the bonus burning damage, Mana Shield, Protection, and Glass Cannon. Uh, Mana Shield, Protection, and Glass Cannon are extremely straightforward. I think that's on every single Sorcerer build. This one runs the Enchantment of Fire Bolt, so all the burning damage bonuses that you get are active always. And then obviously the other enchantment is going to be Frozen Orb because it's got a 30% chance to launch another Frozen Orb, so like before, you can Frozen Orb while you Frozen Orb. Now for the Aspects, the main one that you need to get is Frozen Orbit as it causes your Frozen Orb to explode a couple more times at its impact location. And then a few other recommended offensive ones would be Storm Swell, Conceited, and Control. Now, Shredding Blades is one that you can use too because most of the mobs that you fight are going to be vulnerable, whether it's from your Frozen Orbs or from your Ice Blades if you went that instead of the Nova, or from the Nova if you went that rune for your Nova. So I'm going to be honest, I, I don't know why I made that sound like there was any kind of variable there. Get Shredding Blades as well. That should be another one of the main ones that you use. As for defensives and or support aspects, you have to go with Ever Living, Snow Veiled, Disobedience. I think Control is still in the game, and that's also good for resource generation. For stats in Season 4, things have obviously changed so this is a lot easier to understand but it's still something that you have to pay attention to or build your character around the frozen orb sorcerer for example is extremely mana hungry so the two things that you go for more than anything else is cooldown reduction and mana you should also prioritize getting critical hit chance critical hit damage etc but those other two are the main ones that you should get so that you can just keep casting then for defensive stats cooldown reduction again i just can't say that enough how important that is but then general damage reduction things like armor and all resistances. Now for the Paragon board, just follow along with what you see here. This is what you'd find on max roll. This double dips on both frozen damage and burning damage. And that kind of piggybacks to what we were talking about earlier with Firebolt being enchanted, so you have constant burning damage going. That also doubles and or triples down with Talrosh's loop, the ring, uh, later on once you obtain that, but that's late game talk. But as you can see from this, the runes that they recommend here are Elementalist, Control, Explore, reinforced destruction and flame feeder like most paragon boards or recommendations you can do really whatever you want to do i like to follow these semi loosely i use about 20 30 points on my own and kind of make my own path but i use this as a general guideline so this should be able to help everybody else out as well for some of the end game gear that we were talking about earlier obviously raiment of the infinite is a lot more important now because you can bunch up everybody as close together as possible and then you can choose where your frozen orbs explode at so that's a big deal this season tal rosh his ring of course because you're just going to do more damage every time you do damage so you do some more damage and, and also damage it's just damage but then in addition to raiment of the infinite you also use god slayer crown so anytime you freeze an elite mob or anything it pulls everything else in so you throw a frozen orb and everything gets gathered around your frozen orb and they all die who doesn't love dying to blue balls now, as we've talked about this a little bit, the play style in Season 4 for the Frozen Orb Sorcerer is a little bit different. The biggest change is you no longer have to calculate where mobs are going to be, as we've kind of mentioned before. You don't have to calculate where anybody's going to be because it just goes right where you click it. So you can just spam your blue balls at your own leisure, or you can tactfully bunch mobs up a little bit better and blow them down that way. Now, if you are the person that wants to go and cast all willy-nilly, that's totally fine. Just make sure you're paying attention to the rest of the cooldowns on your bar so that you can cast more as those act as your kind of mini mana potions, if you will. Objectively, this build clears packs of regular and elite mobs with almost no effort. It also doesn't struggle too much when it comes to bosses. Like, it does a lot of burst damage, but this is where the mana drain kind of comes into play, so it slows down just a hair. I did put it up on the pit clap meter, and it really chilled out with a cool and smooth 3 minutes and 52 seconds. In my opinion, these changes are going to make the Frozen Orb Sorcerer a very inviting build for all the people that wanted to do it in the first couple of seasons. I found it to be a lot of fun during my testing. Now, that leads me to my next question. 
what are you planning to play this season in Diablo 4? Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this content, subscribe and hit the like button. It's free and it really helps out the channel here. You can also hang out with me live at least once a week here on YouTube, so stay keen on the announcements tab in my Discord channel for more info on that. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and if you're bored, YouTube recommends this next one for you. Happy grinding, travelers, and we'll see you on the next one.